Thank you very much Spielpro for that amazing my cut yes run. Um, next up we've got Trichro playing Pit People on the PC. Stay tuned. All right, hello. Oh, this is life. Pit People. Um, well, I'm play I'm Tricro. <laughs> this is Tricro. Yeah. This is Tricro Two. Yeah, I, I'm playing both one player one and player two for this with uh, you know keyboard, mouse, and then also a controller. And I've got my lovely assistant here who is just going to talk. Yeah. Hi. I'm I'm just I'm just gonna be asking weird questions. Okay. I've never seen this game before. So I guess this qualifies me for Oh, this is commentary. completely okay, yeah. Just talk when you can. Um, a time is going to be... Well, I'm going to say when time is. Uh, it'll be in about seven seconds from now. Uh, you see the clock that's going down as soon as that hits and cutscene starts. So, now. Hey! <laughs> Immediately, we skip cutscenes. And we get into this small little unskippable cutscene. Of Horatio, Horatio, the blueberry farmer. We have this bear that's commenting over what's going on for us. This is a turn-based strategy game where you know hexes, and uh, we move our characters to the you know more optimal positions, and then they attack wh whoever's in range for them. So we've sort of got to try to lead them in the right way. Uh, also, if I hold click throughout the whole thing. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> it'll, uh, it'll mess through all the dialogue text boxes. So there are some times where I have to like actually click them though. So first, gonna. Okay, and I also gotta do that as well. Options, settings, gameplay settings, fast, cool. Um, when you make a save file, you can do that, but you can't do that for the second player since you have to create that second player instantly. Uh -huh. uh, so this doesn't look like a great situation for us, but this is fine. This is fine. This Mission. is fine. Yeah, this is fine. Papa. Yeah, so we're protecting hands all our son at the moment. It's uh, usually I would have like the controller there, but it will vibrate a lot. Um, tell me if vibrations happen on like stream that much, and I'll stop it. Ratio dies. You know he's trying to narrate our story for us right now. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I almost instantly get the BB BBT. Hmm. Get the BBT wipes. Yeah. Uh, so this is by Beholder. Damn! <laughs> I did say I was gonna ru uh, rumble a bunch. <laughs> okay, so I don't think we actually have enough movement, which is a shame. Because I've got to get that character over to here this turn. Ah, uh, yeah, she's just out of range. That's a shame. Um, if they're able to actually move over to that, then we're able to kill this in one hit, so it saves a little bit of time over playing with one player. Mm. And I have to end each player's turn as well, and then instantly move that way. So this is the overworld little section. Uh, usually we'd be in like a little cart, but um, for now we just have to, you know, walk over there. Okay, <laughs> so next we meet our next character in the game, uh, Pip Australia. Um, more skipping cutscenes and such. Uh, she, her castle is being attacked by these Helmator people. And this is where it teaches you the mechanic of, oh hey, they have helmets. <laughs> um, maces deal more damage to helmets. Cool. And then make sure this character goes over here, and that character goes down there. Make sure you go up there, and you go down here. There, that one there. Yeah, cool, cool. So I'm just making it move to the more optimal position so I can get the damage in. And then he can just do nothing, essentially. Uh, I could, there is an option to um, turn on auto battler for like the AI, which I may do in some situations later on. Just so I don't have to control both characters. But it does take a, them a second to actually end their turn a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. So the way I do it like this, um, I can just instantly mash end turn for both characters, mm. so I don't have to waste any of that time. Um, he has shields. When you have a larger shield, they will block range projectiles a lot of the time. Have you ever tried doing this in an actual co-op with an actual second player? I haven't been able to do this with an actual second player yet, no. <laughs> um, I had offers, and there was one person that I'll probably be doing it with, Paulister. He's a uh, the one that basically showed me this game in the first place. Uh, yeah, so now the helmeters are gonna just go fly off now for a second in their plane. Just, you know, gonna put that down there and then f woof, fly off. Helms forever! Okay. And we skip the cutscene where he dies. Shh, he didn't die. It's Batman. Yeah, it'll also shake a lot here as well. Like, just hold that for a second. Okay. <laughs> just feel how much it will shake. Just every time one of the things just blasts off. He's not playing. I'm controlling the movement. So he's... I see. Horatio gave Pipistrella the remainder of his blueberries and they headed for the city. Alright. So... Let's actually uh, play the game properly. <laughs> So this is another amazing cutscene that we get to skip here, where they join souls. Oh. Alright. So I've now got a prep going bot um taking the bottom half people below. Cool, so they go first, so that's fine. I'll put my cursor to about there. It's also telling you the whole mechanic about oh god, the guys with the shields. 
uh, have abilities to block projectiles and stuff. So I'm uh, moving it so those characters, these two characters stay here. This character will move over here and so will this character move over here. So, yep. Move that over there with that one. That can end turn as it is. This can move over here. And this can move over to here, yes. Nice. These uh, Those guys just die in one hit, so it's best to try to eliminate them as fast as I can when I can. And the Speckled Horseman will show up soon. Tell me your opinions on him when he shows up. The Speckled Horseman. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, welcome to this game. <laughs> the Speckled Horseman. Yeah, okay, let's make sure I do this character and move this over here first. He's okay otherwise there, though. And this over here. It's basically just trying to even out damage enough, just so it, they all die somewhat around the same time. Okay, it's lucky he, the helmet guy at the bottom, isn't moving that much, because sometimes he can move around and be annoying. And that means I'll constantly have to shift the um, controller player, like, down one. Yeah, which is what I'm going to have to do here in a second, which is annoying. Actually, I can just do that. So you can you go there, and that's fine. You can go there, and I'm actually going to move you over here to start attacking with that one as well. Nice double kill. Oh, kill, nice. Gonna move this or just all up there a bit. That and yeah, that character kills that one, and we just got to deal this uh, damage to this character. And that's about it. Him move over. I can move over to you to here, you here, and then you here, and that's the end. That might actually finish him off. Might not. Yeah, cool, that did. Nice. So that's the end of this one. Oh. Music is great in this game. Cool. You want that character, and then that character. Yep, go over to here, back out with both, press A, go over here, now we have to just go left, oh yeah. So now we're going on a journey through distant lands to explore some things and we oh, find nice. some thugs on the beach. Uh, there's a lot of dialogue here that we're just going to skip over, essentially this is one of the first like combats of the game. I'm actually going to just immediately end turn rather than doing anything on the first turn. We're doing an just... actual combat in intro percent. Oh, I mean, yeah, we do we do combat, but this is one of like the first more random ones, I guess. Oh. Like, the other ones, I kind of know what's going to happen all times, but you know. Well, this one would be a two as well, but I'm just going to immediately end turn. Okay, when they actually just so they have a chance to get through that positioning a bit better because I have the chance to go to those two positions but since they can't get out from there that means they won't be able to like I won't be able to do that and then you'll find there, you'll find there and you'll find there they'd all be stuck with there so I wouldn't be able to attack them optimally whereas now I can actually you know uh, surround them and all that Music's I also don't really need to worry fancy. about this guy What? Music's really fancy. Oh yeah, music's real lovely, always. Uh, there's also introduced a new type of enemy. Uh, he's a ogre-like person, a oh chog or something, you know? Um, essentially, he's slower, he'll have less movement, but he hits for a lot, and can has a, it has a chance to like hit you back. So hopefully that won't happen. I mean, yeah, he'll do that attack, but you know, hopefully it won't actually like knock me out or anything. Because he knocks me back a whole load. And a lot of the time, if it's one of my close range characters, I can't immediately get up to them again. L I really enjoy it when they decide not to move anything and they think, ah, oh, this is fine, because that means <laughs> I can immediately press end turn as well. <laughs> so, what's going on right now? This guy's sort of high health, this guy's low health. Um, it's good that guy's low health because usually he's the one that dies last, so 
it we're getting through their health bars quite nicely. Um, I'm using my May skill here to attack the person who has a fish helmet on. Uh, yes, he's attacking me with um, dry bones and such. Okay. That's what's going on. I'm gonna move this character up one this turn. Just so he has he's in range of that character now. And that's all I should be doing. Nice. Oh nice. Level up. Oh level level kill. up. What? Level level up. Yeah. Oh yeah, the level ups. So all the characters have levels in the game. They do very minute to like basically non-existent things in this game, which is a little bit of a shame, I guess. Um, that and then that. Then that's fine. The rest. I don't know if I'll be able, quite be able to kill with that. Ah uh, no. If yeah. I moved my um, other girl in, I just oh, thought I would be fine with that amount. That's fine. I'll just move these two characters up, and that'll be enough. Just smash over here. Yeah, there we go. Didn't even nice. have to move. Cool. That's that combat go over with. So, it's the intro percent. That's the name of this category. Oh, by the way, um, represents Spain here. It's Sophia, who's uh, going to explore a new world. I mean, this land for Spain. <laughs> it basically says, hey, do you want to be on my guides? And yeah, yeah, she joins us. Nice. Uh, she then introduces the mechanic of actually recruiting new heroes, which is what was about to happen here to this cupcake. Oh boy, recruiting a cupcake. I'm really sad that we can't see this cutscene, because he just licks the cupcake, and that's all that happens, just stares directly at the camera. <laughs> just yeah. ta takes a lick and then puts it into his eye socket, because he of course doesn't have a mouth. It's just a sack, like that enemy right there, you know? Oh, anyway. <laughs> So, how long would an extra run of, of this game be? Uh, an extra run? I think you could do it in about two hours. Um, oh, still low health. That's fine. Yeah. Hey, now they're not low health because they leveled up. <laughs> uh, the, yeah, the levels don't actually do all too much in this. Um, oh, I have to press Y as well. It's always remembering to end both turns sometimes. Uh, the, the cupcake is a healer, so yeah, it would take about two hours or so for me to do a normal any percent run of this, so of course, you know, there's a lot more to it in that sense. Uh, what's going on over here? Cool. That's fine. You should, that move can over there, you can move over there, uh, you move over there, that's fine as you are. Move over here, and yes, over there, and that's fine. Since there's a little bit more going on, there's a few more enemies I have to kill here, or at least I have to manage my mass of people. Mm. Um, I have to actually focus on what's going on. He's gonna move over there. Okay, that's not too bad. So you get over there, the rest of you are fine where you are there, so I'll end your turn. Um, move you down here, uh, over there, and then... Not much the rest of you can do. Oh yeah, that's bad. Every time I attack the marshmallow by mistake, I actually start like a small like a dialogue trigger saying, "Hey, don't attack the marsh uh, marshmallow. Uh, we're trying to eat that thing, muffin." I'll call it like 15 billion different things, by the way, throughout this run. <laughs> and it's just this one enemy that we have to kill here, who is kind of like high on health, and it's annoying because oh yeah. Okay, with you, go over there, and you can go down there. So now, we're doing the most optimal damage to that guy, and hopefully nice. he'll die relatively soon. Oh, cool, he <laughs> missed one axe. How much health does he have? Four. It's annoying because he does get healed every turn. Okay, and we capture the uh, nice. marshmallow, mushroom, muffin. Okay, that is a very... Interesting animation. Oh, what well, of capturing? <laughs> yeah. Just throw in that. They're in a cage now. Cool. This does kind of preload in a little bit, so actions happen a little bit. Okay, I'm now actually going to drop out with one character. I'm going to be doing the majority of this with only one. Oh, not that button. Not that way. Cool. Go out there. Drop out all that. Yes, I want to leave the game, and then I'll 
continue doing that with just one character. So now we're just going to be playing on this side majoritively. Of Australia in, yep, and that's it. Um, have you equip this? Have you equip this? Sure, that's about all we can do. Um, we need at least one of you in there, so that's fine. We'll just keep it as it is for now. Cool. Now we just need to recruit someone. We'll do this just to get up a little bit of speed. But yeah, let's go. Uh, so the main reason why we're transferring over to one player here is because now this is going to be a completely random encounter. This is the main RNG time loss or time gain during this run. Of I have to find an enemy. Cool, there's an enemy. And I've got to hope there's like only one to two enemies and not like six. There's, okay, there's five. Uh, I'm just going to take it because it's the like a marathon run. I'll just take what I've been given. But essentially, I've got to kill every single enemy but one. And that would be a good enemy to capture, so I hopefully capture that one. Okay. So I'll just kill those, or make my way over here with the, all my other enemies. All my other people, sorry. And of course, it's much less complicated now that I'm only ca uh, controlling one character. Mm. So I'll just move that controller aside now. Um, so I was going to explain why it's actually more optimal to do it like this. Uh, that's because... Move you back... I try to explain something and then I start having to actually do my turn. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, the reason why it's better to do this is because more enemies are likely to spawn with uh, uh, more players actually in it in a random okay. encounter. So that's why it's better just to use like this amount. Having you over there, you over there. What character are you? Or that one, so you can go over here. What I'm also trying to majority do is make it so that you can only attack one target so I moved her over here rather than here just so she will only attack that one rather than have the choice of between those two I'll move this character over here to attack uh, you as well as you going over there you can hit that one up there you're still attacking that one beautiful so this can be like a two to three minute segment, for, um, okay. or it could be <laughs> to like the uh -huh. So what do you think about this game so far? Uh, the game looks very interesting. <laughs> yeah, good description. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's not much you can say apart from that really, is there? So <laughs> It has a real fun storyline if you like something that's not all too serious and... Um, it's all just quite a good fun experience overall. Oh, okay, that's actually really bad. Actually, I have to back, uh, flee the battle from that. Uh, since the one yeah. character that did die had the net, and the net is the char uh, net is the thing that needs to like capture the character, so uh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> F. Uh, and I need to go back to home base first. Oh gosh. Okay, so this is some time loss. There's also Rip. an enemy up there. Rip time. Yeah, basically. Rip well required. I have to go back here, then basically just leave her away again. Yarn was invented by 1984 by Stan Yarn, by the way. Just in case you didn't know. Uh, there was another enemy I saw up here, but okay, apparently they're not here anymore. <laughs> okay, there's one. Hopefully there's only like a few amount of enemies in this one, hopefully. Okay, four. there's only four. That's not too bad. Okay. I'll try to hopefully pay attention to this person's health. Usually I'm not used to that person actually just taking that much damage straight away. So, it just caught me off guard. Mm. Okay. Yeah, okay. As there's only a few less people here, then this should hopefully go a little bit quicker. Also, only a few of them are truly ranged this time. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Uh, there isn't the well, there, there is an option for permadeath in this game, but of course I'm not picking it. Uh, they're fine where they are. Uh, and if you if your main story character permadeath dies, that means you can't actually progress the story anymore. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> um, uh, you need a the actual character to can progress the story. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, that's fine. That's fine. So, who are you gonna try to capture? Uh, I'll try to capture the big guy, just since he, you know, 
He's kind of slow, but he'll do a lot of damage, which will be useful later on. So I'll just avoid attacking him where I can. Um, move that there. A few over here. So it's basically, he's half health, I just need to, he'll die either this turn or next turn. Um, yeah, next turn. And then I've just got this guy left to deal with. Hopefully they don't move around too much, which of course they do. <laughs> they always do move around to punch. Uh, you down here, you down here. Getting you up here, the rest of you. Um, mm, that's not really much else I can move with you. Just down here. Cool, this guy's gonna die this turn, and it's just gonna be this person left. I threw a net on him, which is that the next secondary ability. Which means, you know, uh, a net. I mean, it's pretty self explanatory. Mm. <laughs> cool, nice. that was good. Also, the Cyclops typically has slightly higher health, so if I can, I can prevent. I can not do that. Okay, so now that's that section done. Hopefully, that didn't take too much time up. Especially since I had to, like,. We go back, essentially that was bad. Oh well. That was a kind of bit of time loss, but that's fine. Okay, yep. So this is some free time loss just because I owned Castle Crashes in the past. Oh. <laughs> Great, isn't it? Yeah, no, that thing just pops up saying, hey, you got that now. Congratulations. Um, I'm gonna move you down, put you into it, skip that character out. You're gonna need Horatio in there. Uh, gonna swap your equipment out for mace. Uh, hey, that's mine. Yes, that's fine. Just to check, I didn't actually... No one's over capacity, are they? That person is, okay. Let's get rid of your shield. Give you a net instead. Sure, they'll just give you a small shield, that'll reduce your... If they're over like a weight capacity, that means they'll start doing less damage over time. Make sure I select them doing the story mission. <laughs> and continue. Essentially what we had to do there is we had to make sure we collected another person to actually progress through the story. Um, we had to make sure we had a party of six. Yeah, but we already okay. had a party of six due to the fact that we had two players. Now I just have to walk to where the place is. Okay, they're stunned. Uh, you can throw a grenade on them to stun them to make sure they don't actually deal any, or we don't actually have an encounter with them. Oh, that's nice. It doesn't always work, and this is also a... Okay. <laughs> I'll wait for a second just to make sure I can stun him again. So the uh, place where we want to go to is RNG really far away. So that's unfortunate for us. Do you have unlimited grenades? Hmm? Do you have unlimited grenades? I mean, they reload over time, but yeah, basically. Oh, okay. Alright, next up. Rush. Uh, so, essentially what we're trying to do is attack this guy up here, which means we have to just get through each of these two walls here. So basically, just Zerg rush the um, end door gate. We have a lot of maces going forward here, because these are the Helmetors, and of course helmets take more damage from maces. Mm. Okay. I'm basically good to... well, not quite good to end my turn, but yeah, just ending my turn straight away. Just move him first. Hopefully they just all attack the wall. Yeah, cool. Here's a chance to... cool, the grenade did it for us. Nice. Is this guy in a turret? Uh, who's uh, shooting out gren basically uh, a grenade every turn, and the grenade can also attack enemies as well if ah, they are okay. in the radius. It's sort of like here is a zone of um, caution. Mm. Caution. Um, here is a stage hazard, which you know they're banned in the Smash tournament, so of course we can't have them here. Ah oh, damn. Too bad. Super bad. Yeah. No, actually they're pretty good for us. So the reason why I'm not doing two-player here is, of course, just more enemies spawn, and it's just more enemies. I'm just having, uh, more player people. I'm just having to get to the end. So it's better I just not have as many people, and there's less people just to deal with. It's just <laughs> in the beginning sections where the amount of enemies don't really change that much. It's slightly more optimal because we can get more damage out on the enemies. Okay. 
he's really slow, so he's struggling a bit here. But he has got his boomstick. <laughs> We're about to get to this gate here. I have a next, well, next turn for these two, but a little bit further with this one. I'll basically just let him get ganged up and ganged up a second on. <laughs> oh boy. I mean, it's fine. He like honestly, he's to take a lot of damage. And see, he just leveled up. Uh, Levels don't mean too much in this game, I was trying to say it earlier. Uh, they just full heal you when you actually do get the level. So that's always nice. Oh, okay. Okay. Only three people can actually attack this gate at a time, so... Uh, we'll just have as much as we can in there. And he's basically just staying there, so they don't actually move. So it <laughs> just saves like a little bit of time, and they're just nice. beefing on him every turn. Next turn, this door will break, and we should be able to get to him. Okay. We have to do a little bit of damage to him, and then he'll fly off in the shuttle. Um, after the shuffle bit, uh, after he flies off in the shuttle, uh, we have to go and kill him, because we're going to catch up to him, and that's when time is, so ah, okay. that's the end of the introduction. And also, if we do finish a bit underestimate, maybe we can play the um, cutscene that happens afterwards, potentially? Okay, cool. We'll see if we get there when we get there. Cool, you go there, and the rest of them try to get around. Nice, nice food, that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Hopefully the... Okay, so we want to attack this guy the most, so we want him to, like, not be surrounded by as many enemies, just so I can focus target on him. So, so it's sort of good him being there, because that means I can get at least one character... I can't really get them around, that's a shame. Um... Cool, that's there. You can go up there. So, someone being there means he there is at least one space where I can definitely, definitely hit him. Hmm. Whereas the other ones are sort of like, I might hit him. Just due to the amount of enemies that are still like around and alive. And they're swapping positions. Sweet. A little unfortunate that that got kicked off there, but that's fine. <laughs> All that I need to do is just move you there, and that's it. Do you, need, do you need to kill the enemies uh, down below too, or only... No, I just need to target him. When he gets to a low enough health threshold, I'll move on to the next section. Ah, okay. When some of the key characters go to like a low health threshold, they'll, um, you know, just say a dialogue. Hopefully this should be... Yeah, yeah, see, that's the dialogue. What Tell is time more. looking like? Uh, 20, what is it? 28 is that? Or is that... That's 28.33 now. Okay, okay. That's not bad. So, we caught up to him <laughs> on the shuttle. Okay, all that we have to do is actually just go up there. First we do have to break into the um, area. But that'll happen in just a second. I'm more so much just trying to get them up to this top corner as much as I can. Uh, just so... Yeah, in you. Just so, because the enemy will be there. Like, there he is, yeah. Oh, uh, nice. So as higher up we can get, the better. I also moved my slow guy to the front, so he's easier to get to um, the actual enemy, and hopefully we'll get some good damage on him. Ooh, no, we're fine, we're fine. In the permadeath mode, if one of the story characters does actually die, that means you do actually have to, like, reset, <laughs> which is always fun. Ah, uh, okay, cool. That's perfect, that means we can surround them really well, like that, that's nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting definitely some uh, JRPG vibes from this. Well, I mean, it is a RPG in some ways, you know? <laughs> yeah. Cool. So this... Oh, we actually did knock him over there, which was slightly unfortunate since, you know, it moves him away from our surrounding. <laughs> uh. But we're getting through a lot of hell. Uh, he's about half health now, so as soon as he does die, that is time. So uh, whenever that does happen soon... Hopefully. Okay, we knocked off his helmet and he's a bird. 
Oh, and then the guy says like, wait, you're a bird too? <laughs> yeah. Squawk? I mean, if we were go if we were being current to the current media, we'd be saying honk, but... <laughs> Anyway, anyway, just go there, go there, go there. A few of our characters did die. Ah, oh, it's a shame. He, that guy attacked um, the side enemy, not the main thing. Okay, so time's probably gonna end up this turn. It'll be a little bit sudden because you know I don't know if he'll actually hit and die. So, um, okay, time. <laughs> what was that about? 31? That is. 31 or yeah, 8. Okay, that's cool. Eight. That's still good. Nice. Good job. And if we have four minutes or so. I'll let this cutscene play out if you want. You're quite good at barely scraping by, aren't you, my resilient little worms? Yet I could close my paw and squish you like the very berries Horatio's worthless farm produces. You're depressing me, Pip. Why the long face? Your hands are bloody with the sweet tang of revenge. Problem solved, right? So turn that frown upside down. Hey, uh, no. <laughs> Have we bonded? How precious. Uh, Horatio, do you like Hansel's? Eh? He's still alive. <laughs> yes. Here, have some teeny tiny iced creams. I know you love them. Oh, fine. Oh. And what a curveball, mm, Horatio. And speaking of curve. And speaking of. <laughs> and speaking of curveballs, I think it's time for you and your ragtag crew of flunkies to return to that worthless rock you call home and rot in uncomfortable despair for the rest of your days. Ah! Sayonara. Sayonara. Bye. Bye. I'll, I'll be out. I'll be back later. Try crow. Keep watching the stream. I think it's Green Snow Dog next. Go die. If you didn't know that, by the way. <laughs> I'll kill you. <laughs> Being evil is exhausting. I really Well, perhaps you should have thought. How are you guys breathing up here? I mean, I'm no, I'm no scientist, but. Anyway, yeah, d take it away. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Let's go watch the Earth burn. <laughs>